Hey, welcome. Differential equations. We got this problem number six. Uh, this is a similar problem to number six. I got some different numbers on here, but we're looking for the gravity on planet X. You can pause and read this problem, but I'm going to jump to the board here. Uh, let's see what happens here. If I read this, I'm not really going to read it to you, but it says... Uh, you take along a stopwatch, you go to this planet X, and you, they gave you the mass, they gave you the mass, they tell you you brought a spring with you, they gave you the natural length of the spring, you brought a yardstick and a stopwatch, so you hang the spring, spring from the ceiling, and you hang the mass from it, and it stretches it, so they tell you how far it's stretched, that's interesting, and... Uh, Oh, and then it says you pull the mass down and you release it and set it into motion. Uh, there is no damping here. This is simple harmonic motion. They said after 10 seconds that it, it took 20, I mean, sorry, 10 oscillations. It takes 23.6 seconds. So basically they gave you the period. By the way, capital T, I haven't used that much, but that's the period. So, this is an interesting problem. And then they, they ask for, the, so can you calculate the gravity? So, the way to approach this problem is, um, is to go back, and you haven't done this, I haven't done this, go back to, you know, a general unknown mass and an unknown K, uh, no damping, and solve this uh, simple harmonic motion problem. So, we've done plenty of simple harmonic motion problems, but when you do it in general, you get mr squared plus k, you move the, you know, you do the algebra, you find the roots, you get this negative k over m, you take the square root, so you get this negative, uh, <clears throat> plus or minus square root of k over m i, and then you would write your answer, x equals c1 cosine square root of k over m i, t c2 sine square root, you know, and we kind of refer to this as omega. And if I was to calculate the period, the period is always 2 pi over this number, omega. So I'm going to just, I'm going to say 2 pi over this number, square root of k over m, is the period. I'm going to call the period capital T. So anyway, I'm just going to play around with this equation. That's what physics students tend to do. Uh, let's see, if you multiply by that denominator, 2 pi, equals the period t times the square root of k over m. Now they are asking for gravity um, on this planet x. And so how do we, you're probably wondering, how am I going to work gravity into this problem? So let me remind you, uh, the way these problems start, usually when they're written, is they give you the weight. And the weight is mass times gravity. And that equals, well anyway, and that we usually calculate m. Um, in this problem, they gave me m. But, you know, that's actually equal to the force. That's that, that weight is the force, and it's the same force that stretched the spring. So we use that, that we say that that weight, that same force, stretches the spring, and we have ks. So basically what I'm getting at here is that mg equals ks. Um, and let's see, because I'm trying to work gravity into S. So now, I don't think I'm going to know K, because I never do know that force. Let's see, what is K? I do know S, though. They gave me S. K is MG over S. All right, I think I'm getting somewhere. Let's check this out. So if I take this equation here, I'm going to move over here. That's 2 pi equals the period T times k over m, but I'm going to say k is the square root of k over m. I'm going to say k is this mg over s. There's my k divided by m, and if I divide by m, then I get uh, the period times, if I divide the m, I get the square root of g over s. This is awesome. I'm going to divide by t, 2 pi divided by t, square it, and that gives me G over S. So I think I just found G. I think the gravity is S multiplied by 2 pi over T. It, looked, it turns out I don't even need the mass. 
I don't need the mass, I don't need K. Well, I kind of needed it, but uh, here I am. What I need is the period and the distance it was stretched. So if I read this problem I made up here, uh, which is similar to your problem, it said, it told me the mass, but like I said, I don't really need it. It told me the natural length of the spring. I don't think I need that. It did say it stretched it 2.58 feet. Uh, and then it said, I pulled the mass down 0.55 feet, but I don't need that either. Uh, it says after <clears throat> that it takes 23.6 seconds for 10 oscillations. If it takes 23.6 seconds for 10 oscillations, what does it take for one oscillation? Because that's the period. Uh, well, divide by 10. One oscillation is 2.36 seconds. That's the period, capital T. So I've got T, I've got S. Uh, 2 pi is a number. I think I can calculate G. Wow, that was easy and fun. Um, uh, I don't have my calculator with me, so I think you can finish this from here. I practically gave this problem away. Uh, Planet X, I like this problem. All right, good luck.